okay um would uh, would any one of you be okay to lead in prayer please how about abraham abraham are you able to yes pastor okay so let's pray. okay yeah yes let's pray i'm ready right please can you hear me now is it okay yes now now we can hear you okay so let's pray precious father we thank you for this morning father our heart and minds are open to receive of your work father we thank you for what you are doing in our lives and we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to study and to know you father we pray for more grace more strength that whatever we are going to learn today is going to be part of us that we are going to carry this word in our hearts and walk in the light of it father we pray that all transits will be granted to pastor that everything she shares will be a blessing to us in the name of jesus we have prayed amen Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Abraham. Mm -hmm. um, so going back to our notes here, we have a couple of chapters left. This is uh, about nurturing and equipping of believers and, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 a sort of uh, giving the work to uh, people that are faithful or raising up, you know, raising up the right leaders, developing them, helping them grow in God uh, and, uh, you know, a sort of uh, strengthening the church. We've already said that the church has leaders and the leaders make the pillars of the church. Uh, and then I think uh, the next couple of topics here are about administration and then uh, a little word of encouragement from the book of Revelation. So that, that's what we have left in the uh, uh, this publication, APC, uh, APC publication called the House of God. So today let's begin with studying about uh, raising people to serve God. Now, when it comes to a local church, we know that uh, there are, there is a mindset and uh, this is, this is sort of a historical thing that happened. Uh, initially, if you look at the first century church uh, uh, that was raised up under the apostles, everyone was serving in that church. But later on, you know, uh, uh, they say that, you know, Constantinople, uh, based on whatever was done, you know, at, at that time, uh, you you found that the church had become institutionalized. You'll, you'll study about all this in church history. So the church became institutionalized and uh, uh, there was a there was a clear demarcation between those who serve and those who just come and receive from the church. So uh, the terms clergy and laity, no, that's that's when those those terms also came about and till today there are many churches who follow that pattern where you have the pastors you have the leaders you have uh, uh, you know people who oversee the ministry and uh, the congregation just attends the congregation receives from the ministry that the pastors and the clergymen uh, do uh, but, you know, we've seen that passage from the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13, where we are told that God gave the fivefold ministry offices for the equipping of the saints, okay, for the work of the ministry. So it's pretty clear that uh, God has a ministry for every saint and a saint is a believer who has been washed by the blood of Jesus, who now has uh, the born again life to live. So every saint that means has a call on their lives. Every saint has gifts to manifest. Every saint has a purpose of God, uh, ministry uh, uh, to do with the growth and the advancement of God's kingdom. Thereby, uh, it is it, it is important for us to uh, equip every believer who comes to church. So this, this concept of clergy and laity, you know, and to consider that some people in the church have no calling or uh, they, they are not meant to serve in any way. Uh, we've already seen that the word of God uh, says something completely different. Uh, and so we have to see how to engage okay, believers. 
So that's what we are going to talk about. So how are we going to nurture and equip believers? We've already touched on the subject, in fact, uh, in the Kingdom Builders course and quite uh quite a quite a lot of content was covered uh, we looked at it in depth so uh, i may not go uh, in depth but we'll touch on the key things that need to be done to nurture believers so one is we've understood that saints or believers have a work of the ministry uh, that they need to engage in we have to equip every believer to become a minister of God. So, you know, uh, we uh, look at the progression in the life of a believer as uh, from a believer to a disciple, from a disciple to a minister, from a minister to a leader. Okay, So that's how the growth of a believer should be. So how can we lead believers uh, from just being believers to ministering to others now we also must understand that the full time you know uh, the the way ministry is understood by uh, many people the full time ministers who are completely dedicated uh, to ministry who have their income from ministry they devote all their time and energy to the ministry you know that is not the only pattern uh, that that people need, people can use to serve God. Yes, there are some full time preachers, you know, for some full time ministers. Uh, but then, everyone can serve God, right? In, in whichever way God calls them. So, uh, one could even serve. Uh, if you use the term terms full time and part time, that tells us that someone is connected to church, and you know, they they are uh, giving in. Uh, a certain amount of uh, time to the church and maybe also uh, getting a support from the church for the work which they are doing. Uh, however, you know, one could be in the in the workplace. We use the term marketplace, okay, uh, it, just for us to understand. So you have the church serving within the church is like working uh, within the local body. Uh, but the marketplace refers to people who are out there with a, with a different job and yet you know they can serve god in the marketplace so uh, when we talk about equipping every believer to be a minister we should not expect that ministers of god will only be within the local church and fit that uh, description of full time or part time ministers they could also be marketplace ministers uh, you know serving god in their own way so uh, everyone should not be forced to quit their jobs okay but uh, when we uh, come across people whom god is using powerfully uh, in you know certain uh, certain area certain vocation uh, we must see how we can encourage them to continue doing what they are gifted for and yet be ministers of god so that that is something that we have to understand so we we must uh, help believers discover their gifts, their place, their function in the body of Christ. Now, again, you know, these gifts and functions could have to do with them becoming full-time ministers. So as we're working with, with a young person in our church, if we uh, realize that God has a call as a pastor, uh, we'll have to do our part to equip that person to be a pastor so we would provide the opportunities that they require uh, we would uh, give them the guidance that they need we could also uh, give them information you know, maybe uh, your local church has a bible college or it doesn't have a bible college so maybe you may you may want that person to get more training and you suggest hey why don't you go to this place or or uh, you know connect to this college and learn from this college so we do our part uh, you know, the best that we can do to groom them uh, according to the gift or the purpose that God has for them. Now, what if the person is gifted differently for the marketplace and their potential lies there? Then we'll have to see how to help them uh, nurture themselves in that zone. Uh, uh, like, let's say, IT professionals, right? And uh, they're doing an excellent job. Uh, so you may want to spend time with them and you know, encourage them, show them that, hey, God is using this skill of yours and you can be salt and light in your company. You live by God's standards. You, know, you 
practice uh, the principles of God's word, you be a testimony. Uh, and you can also encourage them to uh, give uh, a witness for Christ. You know, maybe they, they want to Maybe they have the opportunity to share directly or start Bible studies uh, in their company. You know that some some companies have that provision. They allow you to meet and uh, to uh, just have these small groups where people can pray. Uh, and uh, I know of people you know who have started Bible studies in companies, tech parks here uh, in Bangalore, and uh, it has run really well. And they've also uh, encouraged people from. Uh, you know, people who've not known Christ or those who are young believers, just encourage them, hey, come, let's have a time of prayer together uh, and, and just strengthen them in their journey with God. And, uh, sometimes these people belong to different local churches. We don't disturb the membership that the, the people have, but we can encourage these uh, marketplace ministers to do, uh, uh, you know, their work of witnessing their work of uh, nurturing other believers in, in an honorable way, you know, by uh, respecting the, the local churches that people belong to. So in this way, you know, we can help people discover their, their gifts, place and function uh, in the local church. Uh, and, you know, it might be easy for some people to find their place, but it might be um, uh, somewhat challenging for some people you know sometimes people do one thing and they discover that that's not their calling you know, they might go from uh, doing missions to uh, teaching god's word to uh, engaging in media and then they figure out hey media is my thing so uh, it might take some time for a believer to discover the area where they are fruitful, but it is our task, you know, those who are in the leadership, those who are in the fivefold ministry to, to journey with the believers and help them find their place. So uh, that is the way in which we can do that. So basically what we're doing is we, we are catalysts. God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a, a function for every believer. We are supporting them, encouraging them, helping them to discover that plan and purpose. So it's like the role of a catalyst, you know, just uh, being there, stand by them and uh, see them fulfill God's purpose. Then help believers discover their life assignment. So life assignment uh, is the main call of God, you know, the way uh, Apostle Paul, he said that he's called to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And God also told him, you're going to stand before kings, you're going to testify about me before leaders. So there was, uh, he did many other things, Apostle Paul, but there's something called as the life assignment. You know, Jesus did a lot of things. He healed people, he preached the kingdom of God. He did many things. He he uh, uh, discussed, he uh, invited uh, people, disciple them, and then, you know, he, he prepared them for the life after his ascension. So he did many things. But one of the core things that Jesus' life was about was the redemption that he was to bring to mankind. So every individual has a life assignment. Every individual has that call of God on their lives to do that one main primary thing that God has called them to do. So even in this area, we need to be instrumental in helping people discover as well as fulfill God's purpose for their lives. You know, again, just going back to what we said in Kingdom Builders, it's not about us filling the empty places in church. Because see, you see, uh, when we are uh, serving in a local church, there's always need. And we might think that you know, there are certain ministries where you need people. I need people. Okay, you found somebody, just put them in. Let them be there for years together. Uh, just help the church. Right? And that's that's what uh, people need to do. But, you know, if we look at uh, letting people minister only in that way, we would be stunting their growth. So the best way to cause a local body to thrive is to help people discover you know, uh, what God wants for them. And when they are positioned accordingly, the entire church will flourish no, because they they are in their uh, uh, primary calling, they are in their uh, you know they are using the gifts, the grace that God has given them, and that strengthens the church. So uh, that's the way in which we have to help people. 
let them discover their life assignment let them move in the direction of their life assignment now for us to uh, help them uh, discover these things it may so happen that you know a uh, believer somebody gets saved they are part of our local church they are growing here uh, and we discover that hey this person is gifted in worship and this is what god would want them to do uh, you know lead worship lead many people to worship so uh, when we have that platform we see how to provide opportunities okay so we might say hey we have this uh, sign up for worship team why don't you sign up why don't you go through the training uh, you know why don't you be a part of the practices so we are helping them grow not just in their skill not just in their gift but also you know as they journey uh, along uh, hopefully you know, they the character also will be built up you know as they are being equipped to serve in the area of worship ministry so in this case something already exists in the church you know for that person to uh, minister in however you know we might be talking to a believer in our church and wanting to equip them further and discover that what they are called to do you know that ministry does not exist in church at all right uh, so god may want us to uh, you know connect them to that area of ministry so we may we may want to see okay is there something like that happening in the city can this person join be equipped can they be trained can they release their uh, gifts there or uh, maybe you know i'm just giving an example as a couple and they uh, for many years they have been serving in the area of marriage counseling and somehow you know they got connected to your church and uh, while meeting with them and while uh, you know talking to them that's something that you know you realized now how do we help this couple serve in the area where god has called them and you strongly feel this is the niche area or the core area where they must serve uh, and there's no marriage ministry in our church so how do you how do you deal with this maybe you want to uh, set up the marriage ministry and launch it and you know have some guidelines and just just help them start that whole thing uh and that way what happens is you know they are serving in their area and it's also benefiting the church because god has an anointing on their lives with regard to marriage counseling so uh we can encourage them to join existing ministries or we can encourage them to help them to start new ministries and that's the way in which we guide people uh now some people can as i've already shared earlier they can be ministers in the marketplace now they can be entirely ministers in the marketplace uh, as in they don't they don't uh, you know preach and teach in church or they don't do anything that you see as uh, your typical way of ministry however they might have a strong witness in the workplace you know, uh might be a christian person in the police might be a christian person in uh you know the armed forces might be a christian person in business you know head hr uh, in uh, who is uh, helping uh, many companies you know so they might be entirely in the marketplace but they have a christian witness uh, where you know the way they work or their the life that they live it's an example and they may also be actively leading uh, some of these uh, small groups okay in their area so just a few examples that i'm giving you so there can be people who are uh, impacting the seven mountains we've talked about that you know the area of business the area of government uh, so we might have some people you know fight the elections and be positioned in the legislative assembly member of parliament but making a difference in their own way for the kingdom of god in the area of education it could be in the area of entertainment right so uh, there is a need you know why why should we not have people in all these streams uh, standing up for god there is there is a place and there is a call that people have and they can make a difference also in the area of art in the area of media sports right so wouldn't it be wonderful to uh, have people in all these places now what if we stop people uh, from uh, serving 
you know the way god has called them let's take for example there's somebody who god has called to make a difference in the field of sports but if we insist that that person only serves in the church and you know this is these are the only things you're allowed to do okay forget about sports forget uh, why are you spending time practicing come here you know be a part of the bible study so uh, we must not stop what god wants to do through people and it really it's going to take discernment it's going to take that hard work to know people and what they are called for in order for us to guide them and develop them in that area so in all these ways you know uh, people could be serving god uh, and you know uh, uh, they might share with us and say this is what is happening pastor uh, this is what this is how i am serving in the company we can give them more inputs uh, and you know we could suggest i i remember this one particular person uh, from our church from a different location not the location where i i uh, go uh, but a different location had started a uh uh a life group something like a not even a life group just a group that meets uh once every couple of weeks and they prayed started praying together uh and there were people were experiencing miracles people were experiencing you know supernatural interventions in their lives to an extent that once i met one of my relatives and she was telling me do you know so and so they are from your church right and they started this bible study and she is from a different church my relative and she was so excited she's like yeah we meet we pray and uh, you know things like this are happening and it's amazing is this how uh, you know y'all pray so i was so so touched by that that just to know that god's power is is made available in the um uh, you know it this is all happening it's a tech park okay it's all happening in a tech park uh, and really like we we could we could see how god is leading someone and we could encourage them you know strengthen the work which they are doing uh, and, and it's really uh, you know wonderful what god can do uh, in every walk of life so we can continue to support and encourage believers equip believers in the supernatural um, so just what I, i shared now about um, you know when when we have things like um, teaching from the pulpit we have resources that people can tap into in the form of books or pdfs or podcasts or you know your youtube channels or um, uh, weekend schools that we run here in in uh, apc what happens is people can come and they can learn in detail okay what does the bible say about being a witness how can i uh, share the gospel you know sometimes people have to be equipped uh in even in these basic things uh and then they know how to do it right okay where god has placed them or moving in the supernatural you know we can uh, talk about the biblical basis you know why the supernatural is important and how jesus said you shall do greater things than these and then you know uh, equip them on the gifts of the spirit now people may not know how yes the gift is flowing prophecy but a little more about the prophetic you know how how can i minister to a colleague how can i minister to a neighbor how can i minister to a family member how do i hear from god you know when we equip people uh, and they have those uh, handles they are able to do a better job they are able to serve god better they are also confident in going stepping out and doing something for god out there in the marketplace and when it comes to the supernatural you know god is not limited god doesn't see whether we are praying within the church or outside the church uh, amazing amazing things can happen so uh, we we must just be open and help people also to be open and you know miracles happen i've heard testimonies where i generally share this in the uh, understanding the prophetic class uh, but one of the young people uh, in our church uh, after understanding about the prophetic uh, you know he was talking to a, a distressed colleague of his who was going through um, marital issues and you know so many things so much was going on and also uh, the the couple the young couple did not have children uh, so after you know all this teaching about the prophetic and all just while while talking to a colleague uh, it so happened that the colleague is sharing you know about different things but this young person got a word may be fruitful and multiply okay just random 
just random uh, and uh, the person was like oh okay looks like this is a word from god for my uh, colleague here but how do i tell him uh, you know uh, and uh, will he receive it will he misunderstand so anyway he he got the courage and he realized that it was a word that god was giving for the colleague and uh, you know he just stepped out and in the midst of everything that was being shared he just said hey i don't know if this is going to make sense to you but i believe in god and i believe that god speaks uh, to people and god helps people in their situation and i feel like god is giving this word you know be fruitful and multiply uh, and the colleague had not shared too much you know about the couple wanting to have children and all that but you know it really blessed that that person and you know the testimony is that uh, soon after like they they shared with this person that uh, they had conceived and you know going to have a child but you see the prophetic word was released right where in the marketplace how could a person minister a believer a normal regular believer minister if they are not equipped if they don't understand hey this is the prophetic word uh, i need to share this you know i need to say it in a way that this person is able to receive so you basically what i'm saying is even for the supernatural it's important for people to be equipped and when we do our part as local churches to equip our believers every place they can give witness to the supernatural working of god maybe they they would uh, uh, say to someone sick in the office you know when when the time is right they could say hey if you don't mind can i pray with you and the fever would leave or you know the the um swelling would disappear god is amazing he can do amazing things anywhere uh, but these are all believers who are ministering you know not just within the church but even outside the church normal everyday life you know they are able to bless people so in this way we can equip people and um, guide them to be ministers wherever god has called them and provide leadership you know about mentoring there's so much that we have uh, we have talked about but this is more in the area of ministry so even in the area of ministry you know sometimes uh, people don't know how to minister so it is helpful you know to have some guidelines uh, maybe in a given local church um, ministries have emerged over the last 10 years or 20 years and there is a lot of learning and unlearning that has happened um, you know by one person or several people it's good to capture that how can you capture it maybe you just write it down okay in the area of uh, campus uh, ministries it started out in this year and then you know these these uh, campuses were reached these were the activities that were undertaken but this had to be stopped because you know uh that that happened so basically the knowledge we have the knowledge we have the guidelines sometimes it's important to spell out the guidelines okay when you go and speak uh, in in these places uh, don't condemn other religions you know when you have these guidelines in place uh, or something as simple as being punctual uh, yeah, you know being timely uh, please come on time or come 5 minutes prior when we have all this you have the the um the principles on which that particular ministry works and some of these other basic principles right it's very helpful because the person who is uh, starting off from this point can make use of everything that someone else has done all along and the ministry only goes from good to better and best so uh, in that way you know le providing leadership providing leadership not just uh, with guidance here and there but also guidelines uh, you know helping people understand hey this structure works well you know, you'll be able to impact more people this way so you provide leadership in every way you know we that is something that we have to think about that hey, what are the areas Uh, where this person is going to need our guidance so once we provide the know how it becomes easier and of course through the through the lifetime and the ministry and the service of that individual there will be new things that one discovers and that can be added to the to the treasure of the uh, information and knowledge that has been gained all along so in that way we guide the person we help them make a good start we help them uh, you know even with regard to their character you know sometimes people uh, they are in, they intend well but uh, they they might come across you know in a um, uh, sort of 
a way which is not correct you know let's let's take for example pride you know one might be really uh, very excited about their skills and their opportunities and uh, you know uh, wanting to serve god so uh, but the way they might do it you know it could come across as you know pride rushing into everything not giving anyone else a chance or uh, sort of talking about yourself so as a leader we might also have to address these character issues and say okay you know i'm really excited that you you're able to do all these things but you know what uh, this area uh, this seems to be happening but um, this is what you know this is a better way to do it this is what the bible says so with regard to character with regard to skill with regard to that area of ministry you know uh, how how should it be done in a honorable way uh, what could be some of the uh, some of the things that one could do to take this ministry forward but of course you know it would be their ideas god working through them we are not trying to control them but we just trying to give them all the know how everything they need to to kind of stand firm and from then on no let god release what they what he wants to release through that person's life so you know support provide leadership leadership is directives direction because if we don't do that then sometimes you know people are good people are uh, skilled they have a heart and a burden uh, to do god's work but they don't know how right uh, and that could that could end up in them wasting a lot of time just trying to reinvent the wheel but when there's somebody who can guide them you know lead from the front that's what people say right we be an example and we also instruct people clearly then they are able to go um, a great distance and accomplish mighty things for god and uh, we've also said that uh, it, it you know once someone has grown in the lord and the ministry is is quite well developed there might come a point where the person wants to do something beyond the local church you know and that happens their ministry is not just limited to one local church maybe god wants to uh, bless many local churches with the ministry uh, you know by a, a believer or a set of believers at that point uh, one in leadership should be willing to let go release them with a blessing uh, release that ministry to the wider body of christ so that's a little bit about nurturing and developing ministries uh, uh, you know uh, nurturing and developing believers to uh, walk in their ministry so any any questions on that any thoughts comments i think most of it is familiar isn't it so yeah unless you want to add uh yes yes charles um i'm i was i am appreciating the fact about the the workplace mm. people mm. being ministers in the workplace uh yeah. here here in uganda we have a church called watoto mm. uh, they train the children alia Mm. and they are in the workplace mm. they are in the law they are, they are in the parliament they are everywhere and they the church is now mm. known because uh, of the of the christian witness that is done uh, by the people that are fellowshipping from watoto so it is so important mm. also to train that the christians are on duty full time 24 hours mm. even if they are not on the street teaching and preaching or they are not on the pulpit but they are in the government they are in the music they are everywhere so i appreciate that and i believe that the lord is using us for that thank you so much mm. yes yes thank you charles a uh, very valuable uh, so whether or not someone is classified as a full time minister uh every believer is a full time minister isn't it wherever they are they are full time ministers and they serve uh, in the way in which god has called them yeah so anything else that you may want to add to that all right um if not we can proceed 
and the next topic here is about nurturing and developing leaders so along the same lines actually um but this is about leaders okay leaders who who you are definitely going to assign you know ministries to lead and when they lead there will be a lot of people following so this is about leaders so far we have only touched on the topic regarding the believers so what to look for in leaders now even when paul uh, did his ministry he developed potential leaders uh, you know timothy is a good example we've talked about that he picked timothy uh, because he knew the destiny that god had for him so similarly you have people like titus you know and you had silas so there are people who were leaders who were part of paul's team how did he pick them so there is a uh, there should be some criteria uh, picking leaders uh, and the early church also they picked those seven volunteers remember how did they even pick those volunteers there was some criteria so keeping all that in mind we are just going to talk about some basics about uh, looking for potential leaders so what kind of people are uh, we are going to consider so oh, paul wrote to timothy find faithful men and entrust the work of the ministry to them so there is some criteria and and we have to look for that criteria uh, to raise up leaders so a good leader uh, or a potential leader is somebody who has a good personal life example so uh you know someone who uh, who is serious about following god who is uh, uh you know consciously trying to live for god uh, in every aspect of their lives it's not just about ministry you know sometimes there can be that disconnect that uh oh, somebody does ministry really well but uh, they're not necessarily wanting to live the life uh, but here is the most important thing for us in selecting leaders we and here at apc you know we also uh, believe that just the way um one's uh, life uh, like personal life example uh, when they selected those seven volunteers in the uh, early church uh, you know they they looked for men of good report so sometimes it's okay to give time to people like don't rush them into leadership because people also need time to grow people also need time to uh, you know develop develop that that um intention within i want to serve god you know uh, i want to do well so they need some time let them let them take that time let them develop that good report and you would also see that not that they are sincerely trying to follow god sincerely serve god for maybe months or even years sometimes we need to wait for a couple of years before we we uh, decide uh, and i'm sharing this from a leader's perspective okay uh, from so uh, even years observing that person okay what is their intention do they want to get famous do they want to uh, get a name you know what is the intention if they if you see over time that this person they they sincerely wanting to serve the lord they sincerely wanting to glorify god there is a good you know potential leader for you so look at their personal life example you know what they believe uh, how is their personal walk with the lord and maybe all along you're talking to them you know you can encourage them you would probably excuse me know their uh, challenges as well in those areas help them to develop you know their prayer life their time in the word you know their time in worship their witness uh, uh, their uh, you know their ministry so develop develop everything and over time you would also notice that they have a good testimony even people around them recognize and say oh so and so yeah okay if they if they lead you know uh, it will be good or yeah i'm ready to follow such and such a person they have a good personal life example so look for somebody with a good personal life example that person would make for a good leader also look for spiritual and emotional maturity so in the case of leadership uh, it is important you know um, to have somewhat steady uh, spiritual uh walk with god and even emotionally a lot of things happen but you know we can't be up and down up and down but maturity will if we have that maturity you know, there'll be there'll be some stability 
in the uh, person spiritually as well as emotionally so uh, that person again would make for a good leader uh, and such a person hopefully they have a uh, a grown past the need for popularity self promotion and you know other things that that only uh, satisfy the uh, fleshly desires that one has and also you know yes maturity is important personal life example is important the alignment now when uh, we want to have someone as a leader they are going to steer things they are going to drive things so how is their commitment to the vision that god has for the local church uh, what is you know how how much are they aligned to the direction the teaching the standards you know, we do not want to have uh, built up you know god's work beautifully over the years and then somebody comes in yes they have the potential and all that but they steer things in a completely different direction uh, so that shouldn't happen or they change the standards so far the standards were upheld really well but here comes a person you know they pull bring down the standards uh, and, and that's a very sad thing so alignment we can also see whether they are aligned to the vision the direction the teaching the standards of the local church otherwise you know you can have uh, somebody uh, who is talented but it does not really serve uh, you know the destiny of the local church uh, that god has an uh, in fact that can be very dangerous you know the work that has been built so far can be destroyed overnight so alignment to purpose alignment to vision is also very critically important also look for somebody who is responsible uh, responsible simply means having that sense of commitment uh, and uh, you know uh, somebody who takes things uh, seriously uh, now we we can observe this by the way they treat the tasks that were given to them maybe you know if someone is taking everything lightly yeah we can do it later you know that, that doesn't show that commitment so if that commitment is not there in the simple matters you can't expect it to suddenly arise when a huge task is given but when we see that responsibility even if it's a small task you can trust hey yeah this person is responsible they will do it okay they will do the best that they can so is that person responsible what about their commitment you know they do they just conveniently you know sometimes uh, even when it comes to like i i was sharing with us you know uh, setting up church sunday services some of our teams come in very early like you have to show up by 7:15 am if you don't show up uh, or imagine you know uh, in our uh, location uh, we also have to open the door so the person who has the keys if that person has an excuse and says hey i couldn't yeah it will be it will be uh, really difficult for the entire team so they have to show up if it's a cold day or a, a sunny day or whatever it is it's not about convenience it's about commitment so responsible how responsible is this individual will they show up will they do what they have uh, you know committed to do responsibility is important reliability you know, reliability is when you can depend on that person you know, uh, you know that uh, if a task is given they will go an extra mile to get it done or they will they will put in everything that they have to do an excellent job you know that kind of a person because otherwise uh, you know one will keep wondering uh, will this person do it i'm not sure i hope they do it you know if they don't do it i need to be speaking to somebody else to uh, you know do that work and uh, that that doesn't make for a reliable person that if uh, one says they will do it and they are not going to do it then obviously that person is not reliable excellence excellence is to do the absolute best that one can do so you just see their attitude you know whether they are the kind who will work hard they will they will do whatever you know whatever is possible by them are they able to do uh, you know a good work an excellent work and then continuous growth continuous growth is to a desire to keep growing they don't settle uh, because you see in one season of life ministry and work could be going on really well uh, but it has to it has to adapt uh, it has to um, you know change in a, in a creative way uh, 
and one must be open if uh, people are just stuck with the, their old ways and not willing to go to the next level and that can be a hindrance for the ministry actually so uh, one who is uh, willing to grow continuously and then again you know having no personal agenda you know, sometimes uh, people want to be in leadership because they have all these personal goals you know i i need to accomplish this and that and when that's done they are they are quite comfortable to just quit and they're not very concerned about the vision of the local church as such so you know all these things matter and uh, uh, it's only when we are careful so when it comes to leadership you know uh, it's important to um uh, understand the person understand whether the person has maturity in all these areas because once you hand over uh, the responsibility you know then going in and um doing all this back and forth correcting the person and all it's very difficult so we, we do our best and again nobody is 100% perfect not even you know the the elders of the church nobody is perfect you know that that is a given we know that but we just do our best and also step in whenever there's a need to address uh, all these areas we, we must step in so that we help that person you know lead well uh, yeah so see that the person has no personal agenda uh, gift and calling whether uh, it is suitable now, sometimes people may be very reliable okay uh, but i'm just giving an example maybe there is uh, something to do with uh, your christmas outreach where money has to be given you know money has to be spent for christmas gifts for uh, old age homes just one example uh, but what if that person who is very reliable uh, has no a uh, training in accounting or has no training in handling numbers or money or so even basic they may be reliable but they will not be able to do the work because they are not gifted in that area no they don't have a calling in that area so it's like that we we also have to see whether the person is gifted otherwise it's not good for the ministry and it's worse for the person because they'll get frustrated they'll be like what is this task you know i'm doing my best but it's still not going on. i mean i'm not able to accomplish this so try to make that right connection gifting calling responsibility maturity everything okay and also check whether they are good followers because uh, it's usually those who are good followers who know you know uh, that a leader has to go through all these things to uh, uh, to really you know keep the ministry going somebody who understands the challenges of their leader and somebody who understands okay uh, if if i'm a good follower if i do my best you know to to uh, support the leader uh, uh, over me over me then uh, you know the the work of the ministry will will be done well so somebody who is a good follower who has a heart of a good follower generally uh, a person like that will be willing to work very hard and that person makes for a good leader as well so look for somebody like that and also um, you know leadership is uh, about uh, um imparting into people's lives so one who is only about uh, accomplishing you know tasks uh, it wouldn't help uh, especially in the area of you know church and ministry because leading people is also about nurturing people so one must have a heart for the people so look for somebody who is also a good nurturer meaning as they are leading you know they they know how to um, look out for potential leaders themselves and you know they know how to uh, teach equip guide Uh, encourage support others okay so such a person would make for a good leader so i think we have run out of time now uh, let's take a 10 minute break and we will come back uh, we will be back at 10:01 uh, and let me see if possible you know i am just trying to uh, complete the portions today um, so you have time next week i mean you don't have to join a class let's see yeah okay uh, let's go for a break class and uh, we'll come back in 10 minutes thank you <laughs> 